It's time to start the new project for the mill, and this is going to be the power feed. As with many other people, I'm using a wiper motor off a vehicle. I believe this is off a transit van. One of the problems you've got with these is the fact that they are chassis earthed. And because I've got a central power supply on the milling machine, the 30 amp, it means if I want to swap direction, I'm going to be swapping polarity, which means that the chassis of the milling machine is going to go live. So if I've got anything else plugged in, which is earthed, it's going to cause dead short. If you look just there, you can see where the original earth brush was connected. So what I've actually done is cut that off and connected it, an external cable directly to whatever this is, I'm not really sure, which then goes down to the brush which gives me earth. This was originally a two-speed unit. Unfortunately, one of the parts, as in that, snapped. Oops, and it's dropped. Uh, which means I'm down to single speed, but it is high speed. So we'll do 60 RPM, which I think will probably be about enough. Another thing you'll probably notice, if you can see it, I've got a set of grips on the end of the output shaft. There is a reason for this and you'll see it in a moment. But first of all, I just wanted to get the rotor back into place, which is spring loaded. And you do have to be careful with this because it will jump up and your brushes will fly underneath the con. Again, being extremely careful and unfortunately, I am slightly cack handed. Push the springs back in, push the plate back over the top. And that's one brush in place. Like I said, you do have to be careful to make sure that this doesn't wind out and you lose your brush because you're going to redo it again. Now, this part is where the grips come in. Because what will happen is you try to drop the cover back over, it'll hook the rotor straight out of the housing, and your brushes will just disappear into the myriad. And it's all back together, so a quick rotation test. And to the way. Simply by putting your electrical connections at the front of a transformer, of course, as everyone else does it. So it seems alright. I've done an amp test on her. She's pulling two and a half amps at 12 volts, which isn't too bad. Um, I've got a 30 amp supply, as you already know, so we should quite easily cope with that. So all I've got to do now is just pull this off. Uh, it's something I knocked up a while ago for another application, which really didn't work. But at least I've got a working motor. I'm not saying it's going to last very long. Um, I don't really know the condition of it, but we got it. Next part. How am I going to mount it? I haven't decided. Drive. I don't know whether I'm going direct drive at the end of the shaft, whether I'm going to use a pair of gears, whether I'm going to use a belt and a pair of synchro pulleys. I have an idea. Uh, but one thing I don't want is a dog clutch. I know it's common practice, but as people say about me, I think out of the box. And out of the box is that. Some of you may be wondering what it is. Some of you probably know what it is. I know Ian Matthews knows what it's for. Because I asked him if he had one. It's a magnetic coil, an electromagnetic coil, commonly fitted to air conditioning compressors on the front of cars. So instead of having a dog clutch, I'm going to have an electromagnetic clutch. So when the motor starts, the clutch engages automatically. And when you turn the motor off, the clutch disconnects automatically. So there's no messing around with extra controls. Is it going to work? I'm going to bloody think this idea. But it's going to be fun trying. Thanks to all the subscribers, all the new subscribers, and all the great comments and likes I've had. Really appreciate it. 
and let's look forward to part two of this project.